So we've been discussing about our patients coming late. So according to you, how early should they come and how late is very late for you to decline them? It's a good question that we ask ourselves since already more than 30 years uh, for specifically for uh, atrioventricular valves. These patients are often uh, uh, symptomatic only when they're a bit late in, the, in their uh, uh, clinical history. And treating patients too late has been always the problem, even in the era before transcadal interventions. Now that we have less invasive and safer interventions, this issue comes even more, uh, becomes even more important because we get referrals for patients who are considered inoperable, and so we wait for a miracle. Now, I don't believe in miracles. I think we need to treat patients earlier what means earlier is difficult to define, but we are shifting more and more towards the left of the curve. Examples, Reshape 2 demonstrated that treating patients with less than severe MR, let's say uh, with less severe degrees of MR, uh, is as beneficial of treating patients who have torrential MR. Uh, so, treating patients before the heart is totally disrupted by the, the, the disease is beneficial and is probably more beneficial than treating them later on. Another example is in tricuspid where we found out that there is benefit only when there is no organ failure. So, overall, uh, there is need for uh, more data but also more awareness in the non-interventional community to let them know that there are less invasive solutions which are as safe as uh, maybe some of the most uh, uh, recent uh, drug therapies and combination of uh, structural and, and, uh, and uh, medical therapies may really have an impact in uh, uh, these patients, particularly in patients with heart failure. When it comes to uh, mitral degenerative disease, then it's another issue. I mean, if you have MR, you should treat MR, easy. And as soon as you get severe MR because of a cordial rupture, treat it. If you are young, there is surgery, which is beautiful, it works very well. If you are old, there is a transcadal technology that uh, helps you having a better quality of life. So uh, today we have solutions which are less invasive. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to wait until you are desperate. Right. Now I have a question because it's very pertinent because you're a surgeon. So as medical students, as clinicians, we were taught asymptomatic MRs till they reach a end systolic volume or an end systolic uh, chamber size, you don't touch them. Do you have any such measures now or have you gone beyond that and you would still do a asymptomatic MR either surgically or uh, by MTL or cutaneous tear? In surgery, uh since many years, we tend to treat patients uh, in the asymptomatic stage uh, also because the common rules do not apply to every patient. So we do not know, we, don't, we do not have a biomarker or a imaging modality that tells you 100% that it is too late. So when we have severe MR in degenerative MR, we treat the, the patient even when they are asymptomatic. And we know that if we treat in the asymptomatic phase, we can cure the patient. So which means the patient will have the similar length of life and quality of life as a patient who has never been operated. When it comes to tear, this evidence is not there yet. So I'm, I'm not sure we should really treat patients in an asymptomatic phase. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have several patients who claim to be asymptomatic and after they are treated, they get less symptomatic or let, they have an improvement in quality of life. The typical example is tricuspid. So symptoms can be misleading. Don't wait on the, until symptoms uh, are very strong. Most people believe that they can keep going just that by reducing their activities. You need to be very careful that this is often the case. So we should really consider a uh, atrioventricular valve regurgitation an important factor for survival and has to be treated as soon as possible. Interesting you said that because that's what we face in India, that patients tend to hide their symptoms or they completely slow down their life. 
and then they claim to be asymptomatic.